it's time for another tutorial from the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. We've had a couple of tutorials now on OpenVSP and we've been concentrating on creating wings. In one of those tutorials we talked about using the airfoil tab of a wing and the 4 series type to create an airfoil. And we can customize that airfoil by changing the camber, where the maximum camber is, and what the thickness is. Now by default, if you don't specify the airfoil, you get a symmetric airfoil, which is this 10% thick 4 series NACA airfoil. But what if you want to make your own custom airfoil that isn't one of these NACA airfoils? Well, there is a way to do that, and you set your type to AF file, which means airfoil file. And it has a certain format, which we'll talk about shortly. But entering all that data by hand is kind of a pain. And maybe you already have an airfoil file, that'd be fantastic. But if you don't already have one, one of the things you can do is go to an airfoil database that's out on the internet. And one that I've looked at a number of times is this one. It's called the Airfoil Database List. And I've gone through and used their search mechanism to find airfoils. And in fact, one of the airfoils that I have worked with in the past is this one right here, trying to decide if I wanted to use it on the UWS-1 ultralight airplane. So the airfoils are alphabetized over here on the left-hand side in this tab. And I clicked on the a airfoils, all these airfoils have a name, and so they're listed by their name. And the one we're going to work on right now is this one, AH93W145IL. It's got two names. It's got something that's more like a file name, and then that's kind of a simple, easy to read, human readable name. The file format that OpenVSP seems to prefer is this Xyleg format. So once you find a file that you like based on what its characteristics are, because you can click on an airfoil and come down and actually see what the coordinates are in here. And then you can come on down and look at some of the performance plots for the airfoil. Now most of the Reynolds numbers that are shown here are really more down in the model airplane range. The only one that starts getting close is this 1 million one for ultralight airplanes. Although that's not quite true, the half million one would be applicable for somewhat smaller airfoils down near the stall speed. But once you've found an airfoil that you like, you can download the coordinates in the correct file format by coming over and clicking on Xyleg Format Data File. And you can see that it brings up a screen showing all those so you can look at the data points. One of the things that I've been doing is I just select all of this text. I'd use Control A to do that. Do a Control C to copy it, and then bring up a text editing program. On the Ubuntu operating system, I have a nice little text editor. And now that I have my text editor document open, I do Control V to paste it into there. And while we have this open, let's take a look at the format of the file. The first line is just text. Whatever text you want to have in there, frequently you'll see just the name of the file, something that gives you a little idea what the file is. All the rest of the lines are just two numbers in a line. So number one, which is an X coordinate for the airfoil, and number two is a Y coordinate for the airfoil. They have to be separated by white space, and white space is kind of like it sounds. It can be a space, it can be multiple spaces, it can be a tab. Tab is also a white space. So you have to have a little bit of white space between your X and your Y. There's no need to have white space in front of it, although this one does. The white space in front will just be ignored. It doesn't really matter how many points you put in the file. On the X coordinates, the value for X ranges from 1 to 0. The file format that we're using, you almost always start at the trailing edge, and the trailing edge is 1. And then you proceed forward, usually over the top of the airfoil. That's why these Ys are increasing as we go forward. And you keep going forward until you get to the leading edge. And the leading edge is zero. And your Y should go to zero also at the leading edge. And then you start going on the bottom side. So now your Xs start increasing again. And your Ys should all be negative until you get back to the trailing edge again. 
Now you don't have to close off the trailing edge. If you want, you can have a little gap. For example, we don't have a zero again here at this trailing edge. It's open just a little bit because it has a negative Y. And if we go up to the very top at the first trailing edge, you can see it has a slightly positive Y. So there's actually a gap at the trailing edge. If you want to, you can close it off by starting at zero and then at the end going back to zero. The Y coordinate is a fraction of the chord length. And if you multiply it by 100, in other words, moving the decimal point to the right two places, then it would be a percentage of the chord length. For example, if you come down here to this one, this Y would be 10.4% of the chord. So if you have a 15% thick airfoil at whatever the maximum airfoil thickness position is, on this airfoil, that's around 30%. So if we go to our 0.3, and we look at this, we have 10.9, and let's come down here to the bottom side. At 30, we have 3.47, so we have roughly 11. You add in the 3.5 that we had from the bottom side, that gives us 14.5, so that's about the right thickness. And that's really all there is. The excess should be sequential. In other words, it shouldn't jump back and forth. And that's just about all there is to the file format. The file extension of these files should be .dat. That is what OpenVSP is looking for. So you want to do a save. I'm going to do mine down in the downloads for now. We will call it test airfoil. .dat. And save it out. Now let's go back to OpenVSP. We're back at our airfoil tab. We have an airfoil file type for this choose type line. Now we click read file. We need to go back to our download directory. And you can see that OpenVSP is filtering these based on a .dat file type extension. That's the only one that's showing up here since that's the only .dat file I have in my download directory. So let's read it in. It read the file in and it did a little bit of work looking at it and it figured out that the thickness of that airfoil is 14.4. If we come back to the airfoil database and look and see, it says 14.5, so that's pretty close. And now, here at our root, which is the airfoil we've been working on, it is the airfoil we were just looking at. So if we can zoom in here and take a look at it. You can see it has some camber. And so we now have our airfoil imported. If we want to move this to our other airfoils, in other words, the tip, we do a copy, we move up to our tip. So this was no longer highlighted. It's hard to tell since the highlight color is blue and our wing is blue, but this tip is now highlighted. Let's move down here on it. And now you, when I do paste, you should see it change to our new airfoil shape. And let's hit paste. There we have it. Well, compared to the last tutorial, this one is quick and easy, and I hope you enjoyed it. The next tutorial will be on blending. We're going to have curved edges on the leading edge, trailing edge, and in dihedral. That one will be a little bit longer than this one. See you next time.